Paragraph 32. Master Lu Tzu said, Since when has the expression circulation of the light been revealed? It was revealed by the true men of the beginning of form, Kuan Yin Si. When the light is made to move in a circle, all the energies of heaven and earth, of the light and the dark, are crystallized. That is what is termed seed-like thinking, or purification of the energy, or purification of the idea. When one begins to apply this magic, it is as if in the middle of being there were non-being. When, in the course of time, the work is completed, and beyond the body there is a body, it is as if in the middle of non-being there were being. Only after a concentrated work of a hundred days will the light be genuine. Then only will it become spirit fire. After a hundred days there develops by itself in the midst of the light a point of the true light pole, yang. Then suddenly there develops the seed pearl. It is as if man and woman embraced and a conception took place. Then one must be quite still and wait. The circulation of the light is the effort of fire. Now, this expression, circulation of the light, which was revealed by the true man, the footnote says this was a pupil of Lao Tzu, or Lao Tzu. Now, that was uh, maybe 500, 700 B.C. So they, they're saying this expression has been around for a couple of 3,000 years, such as that. What term do you think that 100 days there? I know that must encourage a lot of people to uh, work for 100 days and, and blow up, <laughs> take off at that point. We know about biological cycles in the body. We know a period of gestation is uh, nine months. What is that, 250 days or something? And so uh, I think uh, literally at the physiological level, there are processes back and forth between the hormones of the body mm -hmm. that get a, a new body chemistry established. In mm -hmm. the Revelation, we're told of a period where the forces are held back, the winds are held back, so that the 144,000 can be sealed. Now, this, I think this is talking about a period of sealing in which the new process that's been quickened has a chance to get, get established. Going. Get going. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know how this is in, um, in any, say, a healing of a wound. You can have a cut in the finger, and if you keep tearing it open, uh, the healing process tries to take place, but you open it, and, and then once it begins to be sealed and you don't open it anymore, there's still the healing process that takes time. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think it is psychologically the changing of habits, biologically the establishing of a new pattern of the hormonal secretions. Or you think 100 days is, is just a symbol there, or that a length of time, that it, whatever it takes to get the habit established of meditating, of, of beginning to work with this circulation of the light? Big, to it. Well, I think there are, I think there are periods of time, and, and we're all familiar with them. 100 days is three months. Now, there are a lot of things you can do in three months. Anything you uh, attempt, uh, I remember some of the early um, bodybuilding magazines and mm -hmm. the contests were always mm -hmm. for three months. There's, mm -hmm. there's progress that you can make in a three-month period. And this would be true for a summer of learning to swim or an mm -hmm. intensive mm -hmm. course. There's just a lot of things that, that would, I, I think it's an experience that they are reporting here literally, that in three months you can make real progress, real progress change. on whatever you try, learning to play the mm -hmm. piano or learning how to... You know, you know this whole business, it gets very exciting at this point for me in terms of the recognition that meditation actually, it takes a period like this for it to begin to change the glandular activities in the body, that there is a, an actual change taking place. I know once group one decided to we decided to do a meditation period at 2 o'clock in the morning. We did it for a year. We worked that. And there was no question in my mind that that brought on uh, the, the tremendous changes that I saw 
in numbers of those people, one in the healing thing with Florence Edmonds, uh, and uh, one with Mrs. Miller with the dreaming. Just amazing uh, growth, suddenly. And, and it was this concentrated work, I'm sure, that, that went on there with a meditation uh, approach. I've seen so many people who have had a meditation experience that's beautiful and have sort of interpreted it as though they had arrived. <laughs> and and they, were at, they won. Now, if at that point they would redouble the efforts and continue that thrust of growth for a period of time, then it could be established. But just having a beautiful experience doesn't mean that you've um, made it all the way. In the midst of primal transformation, the radiance of the light, the yang to yang, is the determining thing. In the physical world, it is the sun. In man, the eye. The radiation and dissipation of spiritual consciousness is chiefly brought about by this energy when it is directed outward, flows downward. Therefore, the way of the golden flower depends wholly on the backward flowing method. This is that business of the directing of the energies that begins with the fixing and focusing. Already we've um, heard about guarding the energy, and we'll see that expression more. The, the idea of the backward flowing movement is that the energy moves or flows in a way different from ordinarily. Now, that will mean some uh, changes. But this is a method, like I think that of, of Jesus, that says resist not evil. It's not as though you correct the wrong thing by attacking them, but rather with the circulation of the light there begins to be the correction. So it's not as though you're asked to stop doing things that are wrong, but simply start doing things that are right. Now, the start doing things that are right is the meditation. The backward flowing movement will accompany proper meditation. Not as though you have to concentrate on it in a sense like uh, you don't tell the food how to, the stomach how to digest food. But there must be that commitment to using the energy in meditation as the highest priority. You know, I was talking the other day with, uh, with, a, with a man that teaches meditation. And uh, I had seen somebody up at camp that had gotten into trouble as a result of it. Now, what he had suggested was a focus on this center, on the solar plexus center. Now, you can get motion that way. And he had gotten some amazing motion. He was, uh, I once observed the dervishes who, you know, actually do move. And they induce this whole operation through movement and uh, shaking, swaying, and turning. And uh, he was focusing here. And he was, it was shaking him. It was literally carrying him apart and uh, he had had learned you don't go that way that's the backward flowing motion as I understand it you go up directly the connection is between here and here as Herb showed you the other day and then it spills over this stuff is coming in from the top here you're getting two energies at this point it spills over into this pituitary and then comes back down then it cleanses and heals and that's the, the stuff that Mel Reaper speaks of as the heavenly ambrosia, as the melted ivory that, that flows back down and heals and heals the, the karmic memories. You can wipe out anything in the way of karma at that point. You can get rid of any desire, any anger, fear, hate, or whatever you've stored that is caught here. But if you go up this way, you'll be able to open it up and then you start acting on it outwards whether it's uh, self-pity or withdrawal symptoms to the point of suicide or whether it's energy and drive or whether it's sexual activity or whether it's an overbalance of the male-female principles and a sliding into the whole homosexual activity. That backward flowing goes the other way. Some people get very attached to approaches that feature a certain of these centers, such as the heart center. And because this is known by some as the love center, they say, this is the way. So they try to open up this center. And whichever of these, one of the reasons we try to do that is we get more immediate results. Remember, it says of the heavenly heart, that's difficult to move. You don't get an immediate uh, experience in the way that you may 
with some of these others. Now, in the Hindu or Buddhist traditions, these centers have seed mantra. There are, it is thought that there are certain tones or sounds, syllables, that are associated with these and awaken them. And so, the different mantras that you may get are associated with the centers. TM, for example, gives many people the mantra Ram. And in Hindu tradition, Ram is associated with the third center. Because that's the adrenal solar plexus center, it's easy to get results there. You may have an immediate experience. Now this, this word, Bija Mantra, Bija meaning seed. If you'll notice the very top of that page, there's a reference to seed-like thinking. Now, seed-like thinking is mantric thinking. But we would use the word an affirmation, and specifically as it contains an ideal. Because what is mantric and what is an ideal is the motivation. A quality of thinking that is energized by high purposes and motives stimulates the response of those centers. So as you think about the strengths of the different centers, then which of those qualities of motivation? I, I associate God as love in the very most universal and complete sense with this center. In fact, that's the seed syllable or the bija mantra. I think when we say our father, we're referring to this, this center, the universal awareness and love. Now, seed-like thinking is the kind of thinking that contains motivation, ideal, the mantra that uh, is associated with the spiritual potential of one of those centers that awakens it. Come in. This is a very important process. We are running up on the most beautiful paragraph in search in uh, this thing. We ought to get to it. Uh, 